my friends good morning this is a monday morning this is when i'm doing this lesson uh in this business and entrepreneurship C, um, series i don't know when you listen to it probably you listen to it any day of the week or maybe i don't know what time of day or which date you're listening on but happy monday if it's a monday or happy any day if you're listening to it any which day you're listening to it and thanks for joining me and I hope you have been following this course because this course is actually teaching you the fundamentals of business and I think I have a duty as a person who has done a lot of business and who have studied um, formally in business to do this in especially a digital format because there is the digital formats or the digital courses that are online uh, rubs me wrong. It, it is all about making money online, how to get seven figures, how to make 10K in 10 days, how to um, um, have passive income. And everything is focused from top down and not bottom up. So we are identifying all the results that we want, but we are not identifying the principles, the actions, and the foundations that we necessarily have to set to get these results so people are coming out here they're learning funnels online they're learning how to set up a Shopify store they're learning how to get a website and effectively that gives them a business they have products they have a price on the product they're trying to market the product they they have um, taxes to pay but th that put them into a realm of having a business but they don't know the fundamentals of business so they keep going up and down back and forward in and out and it is uh, a confusion for them because they don't know what they're looking for what they're supposed to do how they're supposed to plan how they're supposed to set up their structures what they're supposed to pay attention to what are the things that are at play and i outlined five or six things i'm outlining the five or six things that's going to make or break your business that real entrepreneurs look look at that real businesses focus on as departments as areas as um fundamental principles as sections of their business that they have to work on a daily basis and you have to be careful when you're thinking about business for example i show you this example when i was back home I'm from a small island called Jamaica. You may have heard of Jamaica, Bob Marley, Usain Bolt, however you have heard of Jamaica. But when I was growing up, uh, and I used to follow business, I used to be involved in the stock exchange, buy stocks, that sort of stuff. I was running businesses. So I had a passion for uh, looking in the business community, see what's going on, listen to the business news, watching what moves companies were making. And I'll give you this quick story. So there were the the light and power company and there was a telecommunication company that these, these with. So that was for telephone and that was for electricity. And for years, what we used to see is a bunch of vehicle written up with Jamaica Telephone Company, um, Cable and Wireless. That was the name of the um, telephone company and there was, uh, at one point in time. And there was J Jamaica Public Service Company. So that was a light and power company. And you would always see numerous, countless vehicles with those branded logos on them. But... Um, as time goes on what was happening you can imagine we're talking about a company that supplies electricity and they were they had to read meters they had to go run cables fix lines and all these things so they have loads of vehicles hundreds of vehicles so as you can imagine owning 200 vehicles put you into another business you're now in the transportation business so they don't they wouldn't have also have to have technicians for for telephone lines and computer specialists and all these other people and regular office people they also ha had to have garages and mechanics and transport manager and part sourcing people and it bring them into a whole new business at some point in time this company came in who were specializing, who understood transportation. They were called Amico. So what happened is that Amico bought all the vehicles from these from both companies and started to lease it back to the company. 
So what was happening is that now these companies could close down their transportation on automotive arms and focus on the business that they're in. So imagine not having to do that weight of transportation, dealing with 200 vehicles and all the work and departments and processes that comes with running a 200 vehicle or 300 vehicle show. They offload it to a company that does that, which was Amico. So now Amico send them a vehicle. They say, okay, we need 25. They get 25. If it needs to repair, if it needs to serve it, it's broken. The technician or they let the mechanic or whoever from Amico comes and picks it up, picks it up, gives them a new vehicle, and they're gone. So there's one thing that they have to handle every day when it comes down to transportation instead of 100 things. Now they have to deal with cutting a check at the end of the month to pay Amico for the lease of the vehicle. That's it. No distractions, no other stuff to deal with. Um, um, you imagine you're in a poor company and you're also in a transportation company and all that stuff. They take that out. Why, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this to make you aware that the business that you are in might come down to a mu multiple businesses it could dissect as you grow and that is for people who can grow and it can happen another way too the entrepreneur who is starting out business bootstrapping themselves usually find themselves wearing many hats I already I've gone through the pillars of business and each one of these pillars you are wearing the hat for you're wearing the hat for production you're wearing a hat for sales and marketing. You're wearing a hat for accounting. You're wearing a hat for management. You're wearing a hat for business systems. You imagine you being the manager of all these departments. It is necessary at first. It might be unavoidable at first. But I want to tell you today that it is not sustainable. You're trying to grow so you can buy back your time, efficiently run your business, take yourself away from all these things. As a matter of fact, you will not be good at all five areas. You're not going to be good at production, marketing, accounting, uh, management and business systems you are not going to be good at all of them there might be a section of the business that you have passion in you are aiming this is the goal the goal is to offload the rest and major in the one that you have passion in you are now or you will get to the point or this is specifically geared at opening up your awareness to make you understand that you will need to delegate you need to separate out the functions and you need to delegate I've touched on it in the topics before that you need to get people to help you and now there are easier ways you don't have to have somebody in an office and pay them and run an office and um, running the utilities for an office and all that stuff you could do it virtually send somebody the invoices Pay somebody to design the ads. Send somebody to do the, the, the research. Send somebody the, the money to do the accounting. You could do all that. You could outsource a bunch of that. Cheaper than it used to be before. When you used to pay people X amount of dollars per week to come and sit in the office and commute and come there. And you have benefits to pay and you have all these other taxes to pay. No, you don't have to do that anymore. So I want you to look at your business and realize that the quicker you can offload these mundane um, tasks that are vital but are time-sucking and takes away from the higher level stuff, the quicker you must do it. If you get bogged down in entering your invoices and 
um, running around to pick up this, running around to pick up that, and you realize that your business is going on year in, year out, and you are still doing that, you are not moving. You can't scale, and it's depending on you, and you're going to burn out, and your life is going to be lost. Pretty much, you'll be working for yourself instead of running a business. So there is that employee kind of um, paradigm where you work for somebody and you are glued to the clock. Some people have replaced that run the business by working in the business. You cannot do that for an extended period of time. Your goal is to establish it, put in the work, do the grit, do the grind. I know it's too tough. You need to get it right, do it best, get the money to scale it, make the money to scale it, Get the sales, however it comes from. Get the loan, whatever you need to do so you can offload some of that stuff so you can grow your business and look at the higher level stuff. You, my friend, should be looking at reports. You should be looking at, you should be in meetings. You should be looking at adding new markets. You should be looking at adding new stuff. You only have X amount of time. Success loves speed. When you are entering your data, when you are picking up goods, when you are testing the quality of stuff, when you are handling customer complaints at a low level, when you are correcting invoices, when you are going to make deposits at the bank, when you have all these other things, it is taking away the time that you should be putting in systems, that you should be reading your reports, that you should be watching trends, that you should be opening up new markets. So this is about staffing and delegating. And as I said, it's a different day in business. There are no gatekeepers. You don't need offices to do this. You can go online. You can outsource this as much as possible. A lot of these areas. The areas that you can't outsource, that you need a physical person to be there, work out a plan as to what you need to do to be able to afford that physical person. Work out the numbers and get yourself to a sustainable way of being able to produce those numbers to pay that physical person to get a lot of that heavy lifting off you. Because the heavy lifting that's keeping you afloat Listen to this carefully. The heavy lifting now that you are doing to keep you afloat is the same thing that's taking away from you being able to grow and to keep to producing at the high level and the high quality of output that you're producing at now. It's going to get overwhelming at some point. You have to take it off your table. I remember I was running this business and we were up late in the night doing a lot of the grind work. And what it did, it was that it compromised our quality eventually because we were tired and we were not, um, we, we weren't in a cash flow position to get help. And we never had the setup to get help. We're doing it from home. You can't bring all sorts of people in your home. So it was kind of tough to do that and it ultimately uh, affected the business in such a way that we had to switch. Luckily, an opportunity came up where we were able to switch the business model and get it to a more manageable thing that we could do. And even at that point in time, the minute we could outsource it and get help, we did that. We had to delegate out. We had to hire. Now, I will do another lesson on staffing, on knowing who you're going to put in place and the importance of putting the right people in place. But this, I'm telling you now, is for you to understand that you cannot wear all those hats and wear them effectively. You, your goal, there has to be an aim where you're going for the ability to offload these heavy lifting stuff that you're doing and to streamline your business and to ensure that you have the right people doing the right thing.